I've been working with a lot of cybersecurity industries experts for last few years, and um, I've been actively involved in a lot of cybersecurity awareness trainings programs where I talk with common people who don't really understand cybersecurity or don't have that much knowledge to uh, secure themselves. And one one question I always get from everyone is. Uh, why why someone will hack me and if if I get hacked what bad can happen with me even if even if I am someone who doesn't use that that much of internet or or accounts or email addresses and that kind of stuff it's, it's very common that every every other day you'll see like news uh, about some data leak some uh, some persons getting hacked some email accounts are exploited um, and it's it's not new uh, in in this era, uh, but uh, that's not exactly what I'm going to explain here right now. So why why I am actually here? So I'm just actually here to explain uh, or share like not so personal story about someone who gets hacked and what happens with him or her uh, when some common person like. As I said, like not so common person get not so important person gets hacked, and and that's that's an interesting thing to find out because we always read news about bigger companies getting hacked and uh, thousands of emails getting exploited, that kind of news. So this is more on personal level. So let's let's dive in. By now, everyone knows what hacking is and how hacker works. In we are more focusing on us, like as common person, you and me, or victims, as we call. And these are kind of two phases when about victims. Like first one is when when you get hacked, and second one is when you know that was your mistake and uh, it's time is passed now and you can't really recover anything. Uh, I'm actually going to start with like very simple uh, story based on true events. Uh, let's assume like there's a guy who's sitting somewhere in Jamnagar in cyber cafe and uh, browsing internet uh, uh, and and eating his like favorite food, which is probably Khanvi. Uh, he's enjoying Khanvi and suddenly uh, email pops up. Which says something like this: "Action required. Best can't be in Jamnagar." Now, this definitely pops up interests, but it's still a little bit suspicious. Where uh, you will ask yourself that why someone will emailing me about can't be in Jamnagar in one email, and how does that person knows? Because this is clearly a email which is coming from random person, uh, but it's not that suspicious. The that he or she wouldn't open, so he opens it. And that's how the email reads. Uh, it says there's a grand opening of the uh, of some new restaurant, and click here to uh, get the tickets uh, for, the, for the grand opening, and see the menu attached, that kind of stuff. And it is very nicely crafted email where there's like half photo of really nicely looking Khanvis there attached where you will obviously tempted to open that PDF uh, attachment. But then at this point, like there should be three questions popping in your mind. First, why and how someone will know that I stay in Jamnagar specifically in this Lakota Lake area? Next, how some random person can actually know that I like Khandvi more than anything else, like Dokla maybe. But but that's still okay. And the, the most important question is third one, which which says like how and why someone will give me free tickets for something like grand opening for no reason without any acknowledgement or previous conversation but what this is this is expectations this is a reality this is uh, this is what should happen but what actually happens is something like this where you're like no i mean i i saw the half photo of can we i now want it and you stop thinking at that point and uh, every expectation just turns into dust and you basically click on the email 
what happens is you do get the menu, you do get the seed of photo, but it actually downloads something else like an exe file in in computers we call computer virus. And PDF files opens computer virus, infects your computer, and that's kind of how the story goes down. Uh, there are so many red flags here, like there were three red flags we saw on last slide. There's, there's one here I'll show you, but 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 when it comes to like battling common sense and can't we can't we wins and like even the browser is shouting at you that this connection is not secure and you might lose your sensitive information but but no one cares and this is not something very rare this is not something happens once in a million uh, kind of thing this is very common we call it as a phishing attacks and stats of these attacks are crazy. So if you look at it, according to one report, there is one third of the hacks which happens nowadays happens because of starts with something like this emails. And 21 out of 25 emails you get in your inbox, advertising, advertising emails has some links like these, the, the links I shown. 50% of those links will eventually download some kind of malware or some kind of virus program which will run and infect your computer and you're kind of doomed after that and so forth. So this is this is not something you can avoid. This will happen with every one of you who are using internet or using uh, emails, that kind of thing. And you have to deal with it. You have to learn to avoid clicking on these emails. So. Stats at one place, let's continue with our story. So now assume, every one of you, assume that you are in a same situation where you got an email. and But now this time, the email is not exactly from some random person. Email is coming from your best friend, your business partner, your mom, dad, someone you know, someone you always email with. and. And the information in the email is not something like best can't be in Jamnagar, but it is very relevant. It is very relevant. You have already talked about it with that person. And in that case, like if I have to give an example, like if two if two of you are like business partners and you like share your invoices and uh, business strategies on PDF files with each other for years and suddenly you got an email from her account, or that's what it says so, uh, saying this is an invoice, just check. Chances of you actually opening an, e opening an email and clicking that invoice is very, very high. And, and is, is that, and the question now is, is that something possible? Is that, is that something can hacker do? Like can hacker send an email uh, as a third person and impersonate himself as something else. What if I just want to be, I would just want, want to send a spam email to someone impersonating someone else. And uh, I gave a lot of thought and I realized it's not that difficult also. It's easy, but I struggled a bit. I used all my coding language experience and uh, cybersecurity experience and eventually googled. Found out there are hundreds and hundreds of sites which easily accessible, easily available which does that. And I couldn't believe it. So I did a little experiment where I actually sent an email to Watsil with the name of Treya Gvora. And if you confirm with him, that is not his email address at all. This is something I made up randomly. And I asked him for 5,000 rupees, so you owe me. Uh, and and I, I didn't, still didn't know if it will work, but I did confirm with Watsil, and like in two seconds you get an email. Watsil got an email from Prayag Vora saying, pay Rajas 5,000 rupees. It is, it is definitely a spam email, it is not something I came from his account or I did not hack his account, nothing like that happened. It is just a spam email, but so believable because these two guys are obviously talks with each other every day. So it's not something very difficult, uh, very easily can be done. And this is, this is how generally 
most of the common man hacking starts. Everywhere I get one question, and there are these three arguments always, always. It's like, I had nothing to do, uh, I have nothing to hide. Uh, most of like my parents' age have that argument where I don't do anything in my email account, so why should I care? But let, let's break that down one by one. I have nothing to hide is obviously a myth, I feel. According to me, like in today's world, we stay in a world where we are connected. We everyone needs an email address. Everyone has one. Everyone has at least one chatting application. Everyone uses Amazon, uh, Flipkart for online shopping. Everyone's cards are already installed, loaded. Passwords are saved in browsers. Uh, you do travel bookings, you use smartphones, which always tracks your location wherever you go. You have a lot of browsing history, you have a lot of uh, photos online, in cloud, everywhere. So everyone has something to hide. And, and that is really personal and important, and we do need to care about that. Having an account and not using it is, I feel, more dangerous than not having an account at all. Because when you have an account and you're not checking it, it's just there dormant. And now it can get hacked and misused very easily. And you have no idea how and what it is getting used for. It might be involved in some illegal activities, might not be involved in illegal activities, but there might be like 2,000 spam emails going from that your dormant account to everyone every day. Anything can happen. I kind of wanted to explain how and what can go wrong. So what I did is actually I uh, downloaded all, I assumed that I got hacked by a hacker, uh, and I downloaded all my emails, data, and all the data, public data I have on myself on internet, and I analyzed it. And then I kind of comprehended all the, all the data in in a in a increasing order of severity that what bad can happen with me or any one of you uh, if you get hacked and if if hacker is really evil uh, what what he can do starting with public information where you have all your profile pictures Instagram um, your likes dislikes your political views of what comments you do on your public social media accounts that information we think is not important where this information can be used against you to craft like a really smart email where you will click on it and that's what generally happens so even though it's information is public hacker can get all that information at one place if if he has his if he has your identity or if he has your email uh, credentials that kind of thing Moving on to private information, obviously private information, personal information, our chats, our emails, we talk with different people, our relationship status, our photos, videos we post. Uh, we obviously have a lot and lot of private information on cloud, on, on your emails, uh, which, is, which is important. And this information can get out, can easily be used against you. Someone can blackmail you for various reasons, uh, but, but it is important. Sensitive information is where your PAN card copies, and I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone here has at least like two copies of PAN card, passports, Aadhaar card, everything on your email account stored. Uh, all these information are is is pretty sensitive in a sense that if I get your Aadhaar card and passport and that kind of stuff, I can now forge your documents, I can buy SIM cards and use it for evil purposes, I can now open accounts, apply for loans, that kind of stuff. And 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 all this information is not something like we encrypt or we uh, we save it in a store password protected. It is only behind one password and everything is in drafts of your emails where you attach everything and then just close it so it just stays there forever. 
Financial information, obviously, a lot more important because if I have your email address, obviously, I have uh, access to your net banking accounts. At least I know what banks you use. I know how much you spend. I know your statements. I know your... Uh, if I can guess from whatever information I got before this, if I can guess like one or two security questions, I can reset your passwords and block you out of your accounts. So that's pretty dangerous, right? Because then I can transfer funds. I can ruin your credit score. Uh, and it, it will actually impact you in your physical life. It's now no more an online dilemma. It is, it is now impacting you directly in finances. Identity threat and exploiting others kind of go hand in hand. I, I'll explain what identity theft is, but it basically means impersonating yourself online. So it's in simple words, whatever you do, like you, you go online, you create accounts, you sign in, sign out of different social media accounts, different uh, movies and uh, like different accounts for your movies, for technical stuff like e chroma and, and all that thing. You file your taxes, you uh, book travel, uh, everything. Everything you do online eventually contributes to a digital identity. That data remains on internet with your name. In today's world, a digital identity is as important as your physical identity. It, it's not something that it used to be earlier. Now, if someone can control your digital identity, it can ruin you really, really badly. And identity theft generally talks about that, where, uh, where I now have your so much information, like I have your probably biometrics information, I have your location history, I have, I know where, where you go, where, where are your phones are, which phones you use. Uh, I have your copy of PAN card, Aadhaar card, everything like that, and I can create users and use those users to do some bad stuff. So as I said, digital identity is your replica online. It is almost you. It's, it's very important uh, when it comes to your online security to be very, very careful. Uh, on what you do. Simple steps like using strong passwords, unique passwords, and uh, you know, investing a little bit on your good antivirus systems, updating yourself, your systems, continuously checking stuff, uh, see something is suspicious, be a little suspicious what's happening around you, why these kind of emails I'm getting every day. Ask yourself those questions. And you and you will reduce your impact or chances of getting hacked tremendously low. Uh, and 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 most important, like I can't emphasize enough on this, but wherever, whenever you are online, always stop, think, and then click, because this is where everything happens in these three steps. That's it. Like be safe. Thank you.